Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let us see about a new service that is a code wrapper, code whisper. So how to use that, we're gonna see in this lab. So for that, I'm opening Cloud9. Basically, the service is created for developers. So based on the prompt or based on the comment line they provided, based on that, this code whisper will generate the code. So not only code, it will generate the content based on the comment that we provided. So it will provide you in multiple languages. Let's say you are a Python developer. So for you, if you provide the comment, if you provide the task that you required in comment, then you just click on enter, then you can see suggestions available there about your code. So in this video, I want to show you that how to generate your code automatically by using that code whisper. So for that, I'm opening a IDE environment that is a previously created in Cloud9 environment. Now I'm just clicking on open. Now in this, let us see how to generate a random code or else you can say by using comments, let us see how to generate a code. So in this, now I'm just clicking on create a new file. So by using files, I created a new file. Now I want to save this. So that's why I'm clicking on a control S or else you can simply click here and click on save. Now you can see I'm saving it under this folder with a name. Since it's a, now I'm expecting to create a Python folder, Python file. So for that file, I'm providing the name as file1.py like this. Or else you can provide the name like a hello.py. Yeah, your wish, you can provide the name which is a most fit for your project. Now I'm just clicking on save so that it will create under your major folder, right? Yeah, so it's created. Now I want to generate some code. So this hash is the comment line in Python. What type of code I want? So let's say, I want to generate, I want to generate a code to check whether the provided S3 bucket is available or not. So for that, now I want a Python code. So I'm writing the comment here. After hash, I'm writing the comment. I think for you, for your purpose, I want to provide you most visibility. So that's why under themes, which is present under view, I'm changing it into Xcode format so that the theme got changed to white color so that it will be very clear to you. Now, since what I want, I want a Lambda function code. I want, I want to write a lambda function code right yeah i want to write a lambda function code for what to check is there any bucket is there any bucket already available with given bucket name so like that i want to check so to check that, now I want to generate some automated script by using code whisperer. So that option you can able to see from here. So you can see under, uh, under the environment, you can see the folders and their internal structure. Inside that folder, what are the files are there? Those are visible, right? Yes. So now under this AWS, under this AWS, if you can see, here we have an option that is code whisper. So in this code whisper, in this code whisper, we have an option that is resume auto suggestions. It will provide me the auto suggestions based on the comments that I have provided. Now I'm just owning this. You can see now auto suggestions are on, right? Yeah. 
so now i just clicked on what whatever the comment that i have provided now i'm just clicking on enter right yeah so again i'm just clicking on enter to see do i got any suggestions you can see i got some suggestions now i'm just uh, hovering my mouse to there now i just uh, want this so that's why i'm clicking on it if i click on it or you can click on enter so that it will came to this that code will be written here right yeah like that i again clicked on enter to see what are the code that it generates now i'm just clicking on it let's say if you want this code then you can use it let's say i don't want it then you can even erase it and wait for another code since i want lambda function related code i need to generate lambda function related code right so for that i want to provide some hint like for this lambda handler so like this if i write you can see i got i am getting the content here you can see i got the whatever code i require that code i got so i just clicked on it so that what are the automatic code that is given that is visible here so by using this lambda function by using this lambda function we can able to check whether the bucket what are the bucket name that we provide now i'm just providing the bucket like this so what are the bucket name that we provide that bucket is available or not that will be checked from this code you can see by using this resource it will check whether that bucket and name is available or not then it will provide me the response based on this if it is available then it will found it will provide you no bucket found with this name or else if the bucket is not available then it will print you this let's say i just want to print i don't want to return this i just want to print this at here itself so for that i am writing the print function here to print this i don't want to return so that's why i am writing print function here so like this it will provide you the suggestions even the whole code will be provided by whom code whisperer suggestions only right yeah so that code whisperer suggestions by using that we provided it provided the whole code right yeah so we just did a simple modification in this way in real time project implementation you can able to implement any internal function or any implement you can able to generate the code for task that you want to do by the suggestions which are provided by using this code whisperer in aws cloud 9 service so not sir can we able to develop only python code or can i able to develop any shell script as well not just python code you can able to develop any language related file or any language related code as well now i am just creating a new file i am and saving it as a shell script so that i got the suggestions regarding shell script i am saving the name as mm, since it's a script right so that's why i am providing scripts.sh since it's a shell script i provided sh as the extension now i just saved it now what i am expecting is i want to convert convert this hello dot pi to what gif format i want a cli command uh, i want a command to convert the hello so what is the file name under the environment you can see that is hello.py is the file name hello.py is the file name i want to convert this file to 
zip file right yeah so for that i want the code right yeah so now let's see whether it will provide you some suggestions or not so for that again i am passing this and playing this since i want to create the zip file now i am writing the initial command that is a zip space hyphen r space so like that i am writing the command and you can see that suggestion even visible here right now i want to use this suggestion so that's why i clicked on it you can see so this hello.py is now converted to this hello.zip so if i execute this command then this hello.python file got converted to zip file right yeah so let's say i want to create a function i want to create a lambda function and upload this zip file to that lambda function so for this i want the command so for this i want the script command so for that even it provides you the command that is you can see here aws lambda this is a shell script command create function function name we need to provide the function name what function we want to put that function name we need to provide then zip file where our zip file is that location we need to provide and a handler that handler name you need to provide then at what runtime you want to run so let's say i want to run 3.11 so that's why i changed it by using what role you want to run so that role name also you need to provide let's say i don't know that role for this i want to retrieve this role as well from my console so for that also i want to write the shell script what is that i want to know what role what iam role available to deploy lambda code by using cli command right so that i want to retrieve so for that i just clicked enter you can see that related code is also available here right yeah so get iam role for what role the, this uh, i am using for for lambda code deployment right so that's why i am writing lambda deployment role right you can see that even available here that even suggested by whom code whisperer right yeah let's say i want to further query it to get only the arn so for that also it will provide you the suggestions so now let's execute till here that is i want to move this hello.py to my lambda function with this as my function name and by using this file i am uploading for that first i want to convert the file to zip format right so that's why i'm copying this command now you can see under shell commands i'm pasting that i'm just clicking on enter you can see our hello.zip file got created successfully right yeah so now i want to know the role role related so that's why i'm pasting this command here and i'm clicking on enter now you can observe i got my role related details so this is the iam role arn right yeah so now i'm copying this arn to use for creating my to use it for creating this lambda function and uploading the zip file 
to this uh, lambda function, created lambda function, and I want to run it on Python 3.11. So here I'm pasting in place of my role, I'm placing the role, right? So now I'm just copying this whole code, this whole line I'm copying. Then I want to, I'm expecting to run it there. So I'm just clicking on control C. Now to move out of it, I just clicked on it and just clicked on control C. And now here I'm pasting. Yeah. Now I'm just clicking on control C. Again, I want to copy this. Copied. Now I want to paste this here. Yeah, now I want to paste this here. So that's why I'm clicking on paste. I'm allowing the permission for this to paste. I'm clearing this first. Yeah, I cleared this. Now, I want to let's paste that command here. Now you can able to see that we have pasted the command here, right? Yeah. So we have pasted the command here. Now I'm just clicking on enter. So before clicking on enter, I want to show you, do I have any Lambda functions or not? So after clicking on it, obviously it will create me a Lambda function, right? Yeah. So for that, let us observe, do I have any Lambda functions or not? After executing that, let us see whether that code can able to successfully create the Lambda function or not as well. Now you can see I have two Lambda functions, right? Yeah. So one is cloud nine, one is a G, GBL lab. Now I'm just clicking on enter. You can see some error I got. That is what for this user access is not there. So that's why it is unable to create that. Now I want to provide my function name as add objects. So that's why I renamed my function name as add objects and I'm just clicking on enter with the same code. Upload must be non-empty zip file. I think this zip file is empty. That is what, yeah. So it is telling. Now let us provide a non-empty zip file. So let us make a zip file again. Let us make a zip file again. Now I'm just copying this and now I'm pasting it and I'm putting the name as name of this zip file as this add objects dot zip. So like that, I want to put the name. So that's why I'm renaming this to add objects dot zip. The add objects dot zip. Now I'm clicking on enter. You can see it is 0% it is stored. I'm just showing the environment. Yeah, you can see 0%. Yeah, still it is empty, right? Yeah. Why it is saving only 0%? I think we haven't saved the code. So that's why it is saving only 0%. Now I just clicked on control S so that this was saved. Again, I'm converting this file to hello.zip. So be before that, I want to delete this zip file. You can see an option that is a delete. You just click on it and press S so that it will be deleted. Now I'm pasting the command to con to create the zip file. You can see our zip file got created and defaulted of 43%. Now I'm just pasting the same command. 
whatever the command that I previously provided to create my lambda function. That's what I provided with the lambda function name as this. You can see our lambda function got created. The function is being created and you can see I'm getting the responses like this in the form of JSON format, right? Yeah. So now you can open and see your actual Lambda functions. You can see I'm reloading it. Now our actual add objects Lambda function got created successfully, right? Yeah. So in this way, in this way from cloud nine, you can use code whisper you can use code whisper to develop to develop commands you can say code and you can able to run that in real time and one more thing i want to tell that is you can also use this code whisper directly from your lambda function so that's what also i want to show you so let's say I do not have that bucket. No bucket is found with that name. So in this scenario, in this scenario, I want to create a bucket. So for that, I want to generate the code. So here also you can able to use the code whisper. Here also you can able to use the code whisper. Under tools, under tools in Lambda function, you can see Amazon code whisper Amazon code whisper code suggestions. So that option is there. Now I'm just enabling it. So before that, a tick is not there. Now currently a tick is there. By using the suggest code snippet, you get the suggestion regarding the code. So let's say I want to create a bucket. So whenever there is no bucket is there, I want to create a bucket. So for that, I am writing the code. I'm writing the comment first. I want to create a S3 bucket. I want to create a S3 bucket with the provided bucket name. So based on this, I want to create the bucket. Now I want the suggestion for this code. So that's why I'm opening the tools and I'm, such, I'm clicking on this suggestion. You can see we got the code suggestion. Now I just clicked enter. You can see our suggestion got placed here and if we run it, if we run it, then our bucket got created successfully and we got this message. If we do not have that bucket with that name, then this got printed and this will create a bucket. Now just to deploy the changes, that means save the changes and let's run it so that our bucket will be created there. Now I'm just providing a sample event name and now I'm just clicking on save this event to run any Lambda function, first we need to create the event. So that's why for this purpose, for that purpose, I'm just creating the event. Now I'm just testing this. If we have any error, then it will show you the error like this, right? Yeah. So you need to rectify the errors as well. So what is the error? We need to check it. You can see head bucket operation is not found, right? Yeah. So now I'm opening my Python code again. You can see here the head bucket operation is not there. So this might happen with you as well. That means uh, you have returned code may not work sometimes. So during that time, what you need to do? You need to arise your code. Then you need to create a new code based on your requirement. What I want, I want to create a code to list and check, to list and check and create whether bucket is available or not. If bucket is not there, then I want to create, I want to create a new bucket, right? Yeah. So for that, I want to generate the code directly by using the code whisper suggestion. So that's why I'm using the tools under this, you can see suggest code snippet. So now you can see the code snippet was suggested. Now you just click on enter button. Now you can see that was here. Now I want to provide this whole thing 
under this definition under this lambda function definition i want to provide this so that's why i'm changing only the function name you can see i just changed the function name except that everything is there so this is in this way you can able to create a boto3 client by using this command you can able to list and what are the bucket and name so let us now you can see it will create a list of what are the buckets that we have those all list it will create and what are the bucket and name that we provide if that is available then it's okay if the bucket name is not there then it will create that bucket you can see if the bucket is not there then it will create the bucket by using a s3 dot create bucket command or else if bucket is there then it will show you the message that is a bucket already exists now i want to provide the bucket name with bucket hyphen bucket hyphen one so like that i want to provide the name now i am just uh, saving this code by using deploy command by using deploy option now i am testing this code again so let's see whether it will work or it will provide us there again we got error that is what specified bucket is a not valid one now we need to change the bucket name that is a the bucket that we provided that is a not valid i think so i'm providing the bucket name another one and i'm again saving the code and again i'm testing the code now you can see we haven't got any error that means our code was successfully worked so previously we do not have any bucket with that name so that's why what message we got bucket with this bucket name created successfully so successfully bucket with this bucket and name what are the bucket name that we provided was just now created successfully so now already our bucket was created right so let's run and check do i get the response that is a bucket with this bucket name already exist or not now i'm just testing it again you can see the response the bucket with this bucket name already exists so that means we have successfully used this amazon code wrapper suggestions even in aws lambda as well so we used the aws amazon code wrapper suggestions in cloud9 to develop the code and in lambda to develop the code right yeah even we developed the script that is related to bash script in order to execute our commands right yeah so in this way you can able to use this code wrapper service that is amazon code wrapper service to get the suggestions code suggestions even the whole code based on the question that you provide or comment that you provide in your environment so this is how you can able to use your code wrapper in real time for developers it is highly useful to develop your code more efficiently and very faster way and provides you a high efficient code in very less amount of time so that's why this code wrapper is suggestible to developers to learn whenever they are using aws services so i hope this code wrapper related hands on you got from this lab and you got some knowledge regarding this code wrapper implementation from this lab so i hope this video is useful if you feel this video is useful then please like share subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates thanks for watching again see you back in the next video until then bye bye guys